All right, so these are the 2.3 notes, and I recommend that you fill out the parts that you can fill out before watching this video. Um, just to recap, in 2.2, we learned about the derivative, and um, we learned that we can use the limit process and the difference quotient, a really long process, to find the derivative. And the derivative will give you the slope at a point, or the slope of the tangent line at a certain point. Um, and we learned about average rate of change, so that sort of estimates the derivative. So right now we're going to learn an easier way to find derivatives um, using the derivative rules. So in this table here, or this box, yellow box, um, we have the building blocks for finding derivatives. The constant multiple rule, um, I put an example next to it. If you take ddx of 4x, um, what this is saying is that you're just going to get 4. So if there's a constant um, in front of a function, and this function is x, then it's going to be the constant left times the derivative of that function. Now the derivative of that function um, is just 1, so it's going to be like times 1, which is 4. And that rule comes from the power rule right here. Because this says that if you have, say, x to the first power, even though we don't usually write the first, I'm going to do it for purposes of an example, um, the 1 ends up coming down in front and then you subtract 1 from that. So that's equal to 1 times x to the 0, but anything to the 0 power um, is just 1, so this is simply 1. But if we look at um, a different example, like x cubed, the th that would be 3x, because the 3 comes down, and then you subtract 1 from the 3 and you get 3x squared. <coughs> um, B, the sum or difference rule, that's just saying that you can individually um, take derivatives, like if I have 4x plus x cubed. I can take the derivative of each one separately and get 4 plus 3x squared. <coughs> um, special case 1, we, oops, um, our special case 2 we went over already. Special case 1 is saying the derivative of a constant is just 0. So d dx of 5 is 0. Now, e to the x is a special one because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then the derivative of some other base, some other exponential function, um, base other than e, would be ln of that number times uh, that number to the x power. And then lastly, we have the derivative of ln x is just 1 over x. So I wanted you to try following that table above, and it might not have made any sense to you, and that's okay, to do these. So we know now the derivative of a constant would be 0. For this one, we would bring the 2 down in front, and then we'd have x to the first power, or just x. This one, you can split it apart, and we would get 3x squared plus 2. Um, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so this one's just 2, e to the x. The constant will remain. Uh, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, but we have that 2 out in front, so it's going to be 2 over x. And then this one, um, I put a star on it. You want to make it derivative friendly. So change it to the derivative of x to the 1 -third power. Because you see there aren't any rules up there on how to do these kind. So change it to something you can work with as what exponents. So now I know I can take that one third. Oops, let me drag it back. 
take the one third down in front, get one third x, and then it's going to be one third minus one. If you're not good with fractions, you can do them in your calculator. Just type one divided by three minus one, um, and you should get negative two thirds. Oh, I'm sorry, you're going to do one divided by three minus one, hit enter, and then do math, enter, enter, and it'll give you the fraction form. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And we don't need to bother putting it back in radical form. All right, here's some other examples. So for each one, we want to find the derivative. We'll call this A. We want D, DX of 4X squared minus 6X minus 18. So just look at each part individually. The 2 will multiply by the 4, giving us 8. And then 2 minus 1 is just 1, so it's going to be 8X. This will be minus 6 because when you have a constant in front of just x, it always is just a constant. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. So the derivative is just 8x minus 6. Example b, we want d dx of x to the 10th power. All right, so that's going to be, bring the 10 out in front, x. 10 minus 1 is 9. Example C. D dx of five, negative 5x five cubed. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And that's going to be x to the second power. So if there's already um, a constant in front of x, you just multiply the exponent by that number. All right, d, d dx of one over x cubed. This is an example of one, since it doesn't look like one on that list, we wanna make it derivative friendly. So that's d dx, um, instead of 1 over x cubed, we can make it x to the negative third power. So this will be negative 3, and then if you subtract 1 from negative 3, you get negative 4. Negative 3x to the negative 4 power. Example E. We want d dx of 4, or no, sorry, 5 plus, 4 over x plus 6 over x squared. Again, make it derivative friendly. So this is going to be the same as the derivative. 5 is fine, but we want to make this 4x to the negative first power plus 6x to the negative 2 power. All right, I can move this back down. Sorry about all the moving. All right, that's good. So this is equal to derivative of five is zero, and we're gonna get negative four x to the negative two minus 12 x to the negative three. One more example, d dx of the sixth root of x. Make it derivative friendly. This is the same as d dx of x to the one six. All right, so bring the one six down in front, subtract one from that, that would give you a negative 5, 6. Again, you can do that fraction arithmetic in your calculator. 
math enter enter will change it back to a fraction. All right, so another thing that comes up, so remember the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line. So um, if we need to find the equation of the tangent line, let's get an example here. We have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 6x plus 2. And we want the equation of the tangent line at negative 4, 58. In other words, you know, this is a parabola, and if we plotted the point negative 4, 58, and drew a tangent line to that, um, we can now, with the derivative, find the equation of that tangent line. First, we need the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be 4x minus 6, following the rules from above. Now you need to take the, the x value given and plug it into the derivative. Because the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line at a certain point. So if you put a certain point in there, you're going to get you the slope. So that's negative 16 minus 6. That's a negative 22. Um, so that's our m. To find me, you do it the same way you always have. Take the y value, and that's going to be equal to 4 to ne wait, negative 22. Sorry. Undo. Okay, there we go. 58 equals negative 22, the slope, um, times our x value negative 4 plus b. So this part from here down is all old stuff. Once you have your slope, so this is slope, um, then it just reverts back to the stuff you you learned way back when. Um, so 58 equals 88 plus b. Subtract that 88 and you get that negative 30 is your b. And now we need to put it all together. So the slope of our tangent line is y equals negative 22x minus 30. Let's do one more of those. Um, we have that f of x is equal to 4x plus 7 minus 7e to the x. And we want the tangent line at 0, 0. So find the derivative. Derivative of 4x would just be 4. Derivative of 7 is 0. And then we get minus 7e to the x. Because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Plug in the 0, and we get 4 minus 7 times e to the 0 power. But e to the 0 power is just 1, so we're going to get 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. All right, now it's back to the old stuff. We got our slope, and um, we have our x and our y. So it's 0 equals negative 3 times 0 plus b. Well, that means that b is 0. So we get y equals negative 3x. And then um, you can write plus 0, but it's not really necessary. OK. So we have a bunch of vocabulary here. Your cost is the money that you spend to produce your items. And we have fixed costs. So this should be review stuff. Um, if 
fixed costs, uh, we represent with FC. Is the amount of money that you have to spend regardless of how many items you produce. So that includes things like rent, purchase costs of machinery, and salaries for office staff. You have to pay the fixed costs even if you don't produce anything. Then you have variable costs, or total variable costs. Um, which is TVC. Um, the total variable cost for Q items is the amount of money that you spend to actually produce them. TVC includes things like the material you use, the electricity you run, machinery, gasoline for delivery vans, and maybe wages for production workers. These costs will vary according to how many items you produce. So fixed costs don't tend to vary much. You have to pay your rent and pay, pay your employees, whether you're selling or producing um, anything. But variable costs um, are going to depend on how many items you're producing and selling. Um, the total cost that's TC Um, or sometimes just C. For Q items, as the total cost of producing them, it's the sum of the fixed costs and the total variable costs for producing Q items. The marginal cost or MC at Q items is the cost of producing the next item. Really, it's um, the, marginal, the marginal cost is equal to the total cost of producing the total items plus one more minus the cost of the total items. So um, in many cases it's easier to approximate this difference using calculus and in some, in some sources define the marginal cost directly as the derivative. In this course we will use both of these definitions as if they are interchangeable and the units on marginal cost or cost per item. So hopefully you've heard of marginal cost before, but it's simply just the cost of producing the next item, um, which you can find one of two ways. You can take the cost of producing that next, the, what you already have, like say you have 100 items, so you figure out how much the cost is for 101 items, and then you have to subtract the cost of producing 100 items, and that will give you a mar marginal cost. So in that case, you have three calculations to do, um, but if you use calculus in the derivative, you only have one calculation to do. So that's the advantage. All right, so um, we have a table here showing the total cost of producing Q items. We want to know what is the fixed cost. Well, the fixed cost or the cost for, and you don't even produce anything, and that's $20,000. When 200 items are made, what is the total variable cost? <coughs> um, so we have a little bit of work to do with that. So 200 items cost 45,000. I'll leave the dollar signs off, but we understand that it's in dollars. And then um, the fixed costs are $20,000. So if you take, you know, the total cost, subtract the um, the fixed cost, then we figure out how much it is just for the producing that many items. And um, so that's twenty-five thousand dollars. And then if we take twenty-five thousand and we divide it by two hundred items. So this is what it costs to make all 200 items. So if you divide, then you can figure out that it's $125 just to produce one item.
when 200 items are made, what is the total variable? Oh, we already did that one. Oh, the average variable cost, um, we're not going to worry about that one. And when 200 items are made, estimate the marginal cost. <coughs> All right, so we um, could do this a couple different ways. Since it just says estimate, you know, and we can't, we don't have a function here to find the derivative of. So if you remember back in 2.2, if you don't have a function, um, then you can estimate the, um, the instantaneous rate of change, or in this case, the marginal cost, um, by looking at the value before and after um, the one you want. So we're, we want 200, so we're going to use data from 100 and from 300 to estimate the marginal cost. Okay, so that is going to be 45,000 minus 53,000, so the so-called y values, over 300, now it should be 200, yeah, 200, delete that, 200 minus 100. So if you do that calculation, you should get 100. Um, oh, that's not how they do it. Okay. Okay, let me Okay, I'm sorry, I've written down the wrong numbers here. Um, so it should be 35,000 minus 53,000 over 100 minus 300. That's negative 18,000 over negative 200 or 90. So it will cost about $90 to make the 201st item. Which is what marginal cost is. All right, demand. Demand is the functional relationship between the price and the quantity that can be sold. So, um, yeah, so it's quantity that can be sold that is demanded. Depending on your situation, you might think of P as a function of Q or Q as a function of P. <coughs> your revenue <coughs> is the amount of money that you actually take from in from selling your products. Revenue is price times quantity. The total revenue um, TR or just R For Q items is the total amount of money you take in for selling Q items. The marginal revenue or MR at Q items is the cost of producing the next item. And MR of Q is equal to TR total revenue of the Q plus for Q plus one item um, minus the total revenue of the Qth item. Just as with marginal cost, we will use both this definition and the derivative definition. So MRQ can also be um, the derivative T 
PR, prime of Q. Your profit is what's left over from the total revenue after costs have been subtracted. So the profit P for Q items is TRQ, TR of Q minus TC of Q. So the total revenue minus the total cost. Um, the average profit for Q items is P divided by Q and the marginal profit at Q items is P of Q plus 1 minus P of Q or just P prime of Q. So for example, the total cost in dollars to produce Q items of a good is given by the function C of Q equals 5.1 Q plus 52,000. What is the total cost to produce Q equals 8,200 units? This is just plug and chug. Total cost is going to be of 8,200 items is 5.1 times 8,200 plus 52,000. And once you do that arithmetic, you should come up with 938 or 93,820 would be the total cost. What is the cost of the um, 8,201st item? So that's marginal cost right there. So you can find it one of two ways. You can take the derivative. So C prime of Q would just be 5.1. Um, so the answer would be 5.1. Or you can um, plug in 8,201 8, to C of Q and then subtract the 93,820. But it's much easier just to take the derivative. Um, B. Suppose your demand function is given by d of q equals negative q squared minus 2q plus 512, where q is in thousands of units sold and d of q is in dollars per unit. Compute the following, show all calculations clearly. If 20,000 units are to be sold, what price should be charged for the item? Okay, so this is A. We need to, um, all right, so it's in thousands of units, right? Yeah, so 20,000 units, we're really just plugging in 20 because it's in thousands of units. So we get negative 20 squared minus 2 times 20 plus 512, and that equals 72. It should be $72 an item. If a price of $257 is set for this item, how many units can you sell? So that's going the other way. We set the function equal to 257. So you need to subtract 257 on both sides to get it equal to zero. And then I recommend using the, your calculator program. Um, plus 255 equals zero. You can use your calculator program. You're gonna get two answers, but um, it's the positive one. Now, there's really only one that makes sense, and that's the 15. So you can sell 15,000 units, because remember, it's in thousands of units. 
um, at what value um, of Q does D of Q cross the Q axis? So that's just asking when does negative Q squared minus 2Q plus 255, or plus 250, no, 512 equals zero. And again, you can use your calculator. Um, you get two answers, but the only one that makes sense is the 21.65. And in this case, um, they said thousands of units, so you don't want to convert it to thousands of units. Like up here it says whole units, here it says thousands. Next example. Just checking my recording here, hopefully it's all going through. Alright, let the demand function for a product <coughs> be given. Um, by the function d of q equals negative 1.35q plus 290, where q is the quantity of items in demand and d of q is the price per item in dollars that can be charged when q items are sold. Suppose fixed costs of production for this item are $5,000 and variable costs are $8 per item. Produced. If 51 items are produced and sold, find the following. Total revenue from selling 51 items to the nearest penny. All right, so D of Q, your demand function, is negative 1.35 Q plus 290. So that's your price. And then C of Q your cost is 5,000 um, plus eight dollars per item so plus eight Q that's a plus sign so for the first one our revenue of fifty one dollars or at fifty one items rather um, is going to be equal to <coughs> our price just simply plugging in um, 51 into our demand or price function. So we get 51 ugh, times negative 1.35 times 51 plus 290. Okay, and then the 51 out here is we're selling 51 items, and the price or the co um, yeah the price would be here. So revenue is going to be price times um, number of items sold. So let me put that here: number of items sold and then times price. And that gets you revenue. So if you do all that math out, you get 11,278.65 to the nearest cent. B, the total cost to produce 51 items to the nearest penny. So C of 51 is 5,000 plus 8 times 51 and that's 5,408 dollars <coughs> this wants total cost so we plug it into our total cost function and voila part C the total profits to produce 51 items to the nearest penny Profits may or may not be negative. So we can take the information that we have here. Our total revenue was $11,278.65. And we subtract our cost, 5408 And what's left is the 5870.65. 5, 
So that's how much profit this company is making. <clears throat> All right, D, a baseball team plays in a stadium that holds 64,000 spectators. With the ticket price at $9, the average attendance has been 29,000. When the price dropped to $5, the average attendance rose to 32,000. Find the demand function where D of Q, where Q is the quantity or number of spectators, so that's like your X. And um, so and assume D of Q is linear. So it's telling you when it says that Q is the quantity or number of spectators, um, that's what value comes first, because basically they're giving us two points. Um, they're giving us 60, no, no not 64,000. Let me delete that. Um, when the price is $9, attendance has been 29,000. nine dollars and and at thirty two thousand spectators the price is five dollars so that's how you make sure that you don't have these in the wrong order um, as you pay attention to what they say Q is because D of Q would be your Y All right, so from there, um, we need to find the slope. So we get 9 minus 5 over 29,000 minus 32,000. And that's going to give us um, 4 over 3,000. the nine goes yeah that's right um, four over negative three thousand <coughs> which reduces to negative one over seven hundred and fifty to finish finding our function um, pick one of the points uh, I, I used 29,009. So 9 equals negative 1 over 750. Um, times 29,000 plus B. So you get 9 equals negative 116 over 3 when you do the multiplication plus B and then add the 116 over 3 over and you get B is 143 over 3. So our demand function D of Q is negative 1 over 750 Q plus 143 over 3. Suppose a product's revenue function is given by R of Q equals negative Q squared plus 300Q. Find an expression for the rev marginal revenue. Um, marginal revenue is just the um, derivative, so that's negative 12Q plus 300. And the last one, F. The cost of producing uh, X units of stuffed alligator toys is C of X equals 0.001 X squared plus 6X plus 5,000. Find the marginal cost at production level of 1,000 units. So marginal cost is going to be the derivative. C prime of X is equal to 0.002 X plus 6. And then, if you want at 1,000, you just have to plug 1,000 into that function. And 
that would be 0 0.002 times 1,000 plus 6, and that's just 8. And that's it.